listen, right? So, I'm um. Oh no, I was just talking about. I was just feeling so good. I was feel, I was talking about the motherfucking the di the music, the different times in music and the different people. Like how easy eating them fucked the whole game up, really, with that fake gangster rap. How Ice Cube and all them niggas not and Tupac and them not the real niggas that they say they are. You know what I'm saying? That destroyed rap. You know what I'm saying? I mean, really, it did. And, and it wasn't the fact that it was gangster music. See, it's a difference between real life music and gangster music. That gangster music was fake shit, made believe. See, listen, man. Let me take y'all back a little bit. See, y'all don't know. You know, I just wish all every young person in the world I could take back to the Crush Groove days. When I say the Crush Groove days, I mean back when LL Cool J run the movie Crush Groove. If any kid out there, man. You gotta watch it, man. See, listen, dog. Run DMC was the first. They had the dope man persona. Every dope man in the world wanted to go see Run DMC, Houdini, LL Cool J. They really wasn't rapping about that dope shit, but they had the image. You know what I'm saying? They had the dope boy image, and that's all the street niggas wanted. It was the opposite then. It was like the artist was being artists. They came from dope. They came from poor shit, broke shit. They didn't have to say it. Like, you know what I'm saying? We The dope niggas love their music, so all the dope niggas went to their shows. They didn't rap about selling kilos of cocaine and none of that shit. They was just rapping about real life. Just shit you can groove to. Niggas Earl Flynn out there with the campaign hats on in Detroit, boy. Nigga back then had the gazelles, nigga. The Adidas suits with the, with the top tens, man. Come on, my nigga. It was beautiful back then. It was violent though. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not over exaggerating nothing. I'm telling you, it was violent as fuck back then. But it was just a whole different vibe. Like some niggas say, it wasn't that violent back then. You a motherfucking lie. '86 probably was the most. '86 was probably the most murders in Detroit history. Nigga, crack was out. A lot of money out here. You know what I'm saying? I remember when Troops first came out. Nigga, I remember my dog had the, the yellow and black Troops. Them was the coldest shoes I had ever seen. Diodoras and Feelers and all that shit, nigga. Come on, my nigga. So, uh, Lee Kai Sporter, if you know the fucking track shoes around, LL Cool J used to rock. Man, it was like back then you had Big Daddy Kane, man. You had all them guys, Cool G, Rap, Nas. You had, it was just so many rappers in like the 80s and early 90s that was, it was lyrical, it was cool, good music, KRS One, most from New York. So, but when you and them LA niggas came through, Man, they kicked the dough in, my nigga. When LA went, man, nigga, cause look, 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 look what LA came with, my nigga. They changed the whole shit. You had even back then, you had fucking Spice One, nigga, E40, nigga. Come on, my dog, E40, and them hit that motherfucker. Then you got a nigga like uh, what's his name? Uh, a uh, uh, DJ Quick came with his whole clique. Different times, man. Man, I can I, listen, dog. I can tell y'all about cars. You know, I'm a car fanatic, nigga. I never forget Big Head Daryl had that white cutlass out back then, nigga. About about like eighty some early nineties, about ninety two, about ninety ninety two. He had that seventy five, seventy four cutlass, nigga, all white with the motherfucking bang in that bitch. That nigga had sounds was stupid. That nigga was banging that at your own wrist. You know that song, at your own wrist, play at your own. That's my shit to the day, nigga. i never forget when I heard my mind playing tricks on him. That shit, a nigga came up Finkel. Finkel and Myers. The boys all had the hydraulics on their cars. They had the 76 and Palace hard tops. All different colors, nigga, like Skittles, blue, burgundy with the white top, white interior. All of them had hydraulics. My man came through with that motherfucking El Camino on them all gold things, nigga. Three wheeling that bitch playing, uh, 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 playing, um, uh, my mom playing tricks on me. I said, oh my God. I had an El Camino at the time. All black. I was 14 to 15 years old. My dad, I had an El Camino. My daddy gave to me my first car, my nigga. My daddy had an El Camino built with the 350 headers, MSD box, all that shit on. That bitch was running. I sent the shit to a nigga on Schoolcraft and a shop burnt down. And the nigga ended up taking my car. I never got the car back. I had that bitch painted white with the white piped out interior. I was 14 or 15 years old. And so then I ended up getting a Chevelle when I turned 16, 17. I got a, a 71 SS. I had a 71 SS Chevelle, all red, with the black interior, my nigga. Uh, I was always in the car. I can name a thousand old schools out of own. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, my daddy was into cars. I was a spoiled kid. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was coming up, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, my mama bought me that Chevelle. My mama bought me that Chevelle. 
bitch was real, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, I was young, I was 17, my mama hit the number, some shit had happened, and I, I wanted a, a SS money. I ended up getting an SS money after that, though. I had an SS money with the T-tops on that bitch, with the Recaro seats in that motherfucker, with the dog built the S350 in that motherfucker. Um, I had 80 colors. I done had 76 Impala. I done had a 64 Impala Super Sport. I had, I can just go on up the list. But, uh, I had a 79 with the bubble back window on it. Man, so much shit I done had then. But I, I can remember so many songs, dog, like, that take me back. And I try to tell niggas now, nah, like, dog, like, man, man, listen, man. I, my uncle used to come get me every weekend. Me and my little cousin, you know, we, we, we'll be together. He'd come get me to spend a night, you know, to keep my cousin's company. And he'll always rent that crush groove. And he'll always rent. It was a run DMC take. I used to want to be Jam Master J so bad or run. Like, there was my niggas. Even though DMC was one of the coldest out the group. I always, so I became a DJ. That's how I started my first rec, my, my first um, group. I was in elementary school with Damon them. Me and Damon Richmond. My dog, Damon Richmond, man. I ain't seen these. Troy Lehman and Damon. We started Darren, Marcel, and Maurice, the two brothers. They got in our group. We got signed to Terrence Parker. We got actually got a record deal at 15. I got a picture with the record in my hand. I had just got signed in Tangible Records, nigga. At, at 15 years old, we had a record deal. You know what I'm saying? That's how, uh, what's my man name? Keith Washington. You know, you know my man who's seen Candlelight, whatever that shit is. His brother then wanted to sign us. Gino Washington was his brother. He used to want to sign us and shit. But I got what dog. So I remember one time he gave us front row seats to Keith, Keith Washington show we went. But man, it's just funny. The reason I'm speaking on this, it's funny how music went back then. Like, man, man, that Crush Goo era, man. Like, everybody, when they see them 86 Barrettes drop Cadillacs, they be like, oh, that's that too short. No, that's that DJ Run, nigga. When Run had that bitch with the white, with that bitch was all white with the red interior, red top, my nigga jumping out with the dog-ass donkey knot, throwing that bitch. Dog, that was the shit, nigga. That whole era, man, was just like, man, watching Big Daddy Kane and Slick Rick, teenage little. I can go back and tell you where I was at then. I was a young nigga on Mansfield, where I'm from, Schoolcraft. Listen to Teenage Love. Uh, Slick Rick was the shit back then. Bam, man, man, Biz Marquee, Big Daddy Kane. I remember that whole era. Then it came to the run, the, 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 the LL Cool J, Dairy Vet era. That shit came about. Then you go to the Ghetto Boys. The Ghetto Boys was actually, I think they came before NWA. The Ghetto Boys came out of Texas and hit hard than a motherfucker. That was like the first gangster niggas that I can remember. Now, you know, locally, in my city, you know, we had Awesome Dre. We had, we had a lot of, you know, low Eshan was the, the, to me, a lot of people didn't fuck with Eshan. I, I'm an Eshan fan, fanatic, my nigga. He got a sister named Barrow, his brother, J-A-Y. We do a die, murder you all without an alibi. I remember they whole shit, nigga, they was from the east side. Esham had some dog ass songs. And people do not get Esham his props because they think they rap about that devil worship and shit and yada, yada, yada. So niggas really don't fuck with him. But Esham was one of the main niggas that done it. He actually was before Puffy and all these niggas. When it come to the black independence, that's what I want to give him his flowers now. Esham and his brother on Real Life Productions way back then, way before I even knew about a goddamn Puffy or any of that shit. They had their own independent shit going on. They weren't trying to get signed to nobody. Eshawn was them niggas. So, you know, we can go about Detroit rap history, we can go on rap history. But I just want to, my whole purpose of this shit is to, like, listen, that gangster music fucked everything up, my nigga. When Easy e them came in and in on the, on, on the shit, I remember when that shit first came out, my cousin had the actual, the actual record, my nigga. He had the actual record. Not the tape, the record. And um, listen to Easy E. Easy E them, but then it just got too, they was too gangster with it. You had Ice Cube, wanted to be so hard. All these niggas, they was just so hard. So the world thought they was hard. So that 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 spread to see Spice One came in the game. See, once LA kicked the door in, see New York had the shit on super lot. But once LA got on that shit, man, LA just showed up, showed up, and showed out. That New York shit was over. You had Spice One on the gangster shit, number one. Spice One, MC8. Uh, then you had DJ Quick came with that whole. Man, I can remember where I was at, my nigga, listening to this shit. DJ Quick came and just 
See, DJ Quick came and gave it like fuck the gangster shit. It gave it like a a mellow feeling, like man, party atmosphere. DJ Quick was man, that nigga. I don't understand how he not a billionaire right now. I don't understand how DJ Quick not a billionaire right now. He 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 was the first Puffy before Puffy, my nigga. He had all the artists. He did the doggest music. I just don't understand. That's why I always tell people in all my shit. I say, yeah, Jay Z is a billionaire. Fuck, you can't work. It's not. It's not. It's not about your work ethic or none of that shit. You got to be chosen to be a billionaire. There's no hard work in the world that can get you. Hard work don't get you to be a billionaire. You know what I'm saying? It's all about who you know, right place, right time. Sometimes how you sell your soul, my nigga. And, I, and I'm not saying that literally, but like literally. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know how motherfuckers be like, well, he, he Illuminati. I don't know if that shit true or not. I do kind of, now I'm seeing this like party something. But listen, man, you got to know somebody. You're not about to just blow up like, like who, you know how many motherfuckers worked as hard as Jay-Z, had way more good ideals than Jay-Z, but not in Jay-Z place. You know what I'm saying? It's all about being in the right place at the right time. Like, Magic Johnson just not being a billionaire. Out of all the shit that he... Shaq, I don't even think a billionaire yet. But yet, he goes Jay-Z, a multi-billionaire. You got to think about it. Like, what the fuck? These niggas got all type of theaters and why his money? You know what I'm saying? Like, how the fuck did he get there so quick? You got to ask yourself a lot of questions, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I'm not hating on none of that shit. I'm proud of the nigga. You know what I'm saying? I just wish he'd do more for his people. And I don't mean money-wise. I just I just wish that he'd voice himself, put himself in his own hood sometime and show that he care about the black race. Like, nigga, like, I, you know, I'm with these niggas. I'm out here. We need to stop doing this, this, and this. Like, that's what we need. We don't need nobody money. We need famous motherfuckers just out here in the hood. Like, look, nigga, that's what we about to do. But now, nah, fuck all these billionaire motherfuckers. We don't need them. Now, nah, it's niggas out here like Scan and Bone and um, Jack Funny 313. Like, these niggas from my hood on, with 100,000 followers, they, they in the hood. They can change the hood. You know what I'm saying? Niggas like me who are on the rise that's in the hood every day. Like, look, nigga, we about to do this, this, and this. But anyway, I'm on the music shit. So, when Easy e came along, it's just all that fake-ass gangster shit. It just fucked everything up. It did, dog. That whole, that, all that persona that you had the scar faces and Willie D and them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I kind of respect them a little more because they never really stuck to the I'm a gangster shit. When you hear Scarface on the motherfucking interview, he talking everything but some gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? See, these niggas, not only did they rap this fraudulent shit, they did movies about the fraudulent shit. Then they sit down and talk like they was actually real gangsters. And they wasn't, you know what I'm saying? And that's what fucked the kids up, man. That that easy eating them came and fucked the game up. Then the death row shit. It just was just a bad cloud over that whole shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a difference between reality rap. Like my boy like Sebo. I don't like Sebo, right? But my boy, I mean, I love, I respect him as a rapper. Like I respect Red Man as a rapper. I just that ain't no shit that I just listen to. Like Sebo ain't no nigga I listen to. You know what I'm saying? But anybody who do, I respect them. I like, you know what I'm saying? My homeboy love them. But he talk reality rap. You know what I'm saying? He talk shit. Ain't nobody just holding him to no gangster car. They know that this. He rapping about what's going on. But for some reason, when you think about NWA, you thinking like, oh, these niggas was actually killers, you know, drug dealers. And, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it wasn't none of that. That's why I tell people about Tupac. When Tupac came along, life changed the music. But in between that, you know how many good ass rappers it is out here? You know how many motherfucking rappers that came along with Tupac and Big that, that that was probably colder than them? Listen, man, people are strategically put in these places, man. I'm telling you, even with the basketball, football. Listen, dog, you know how many cold motherfuckers it is out here boxing right now that's on the street that ain't even found? This niggas know they there, but they, they for some reason, they're like, no, we don't want to fuck with them. Just like, just like the music. Like, we don't want to fuck with him because, no, I don't think we can... You know, you know, listen to the bullshit they putting out. My pussy pink, my booty hole brown. Like, what? And you know what's funny? I used to judge, I used to judge them, right? I used to judge, you know, like, damn, this fucking bitch, this whore, this nasty rat bitch. But then, when I start seeing old girl on, on interviews, my nigga, see, interviews mean everything, right? Like, you see her character, and you, you will see that she ain't nothing like what she rap about. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could tell she's just a good-hearted country motherfucker. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? Like when I looked at her on certain interviews, I'm like, oh, her interview win me over. Like a lot of rappers that I see on TV now that I, nigga, I watch their interviews before I even know who they are because it's a young nigga world, right? So I cut on the interviews and I'm like, okay, let me now let me see what he rapping about. You know what I'm saying? Like what's the nigga name who rapped with Drake? Um, what's the nigga name? Twenty one set. That nigga is garb, man. Listen, when I tell you fucking garbage. When I tell you that nigga is fucking garbage to me, nigga, that nigga is beyond garbage. Like, how the fuck you even get to eat? Man, how in the fuck? Some of these niggas, some of this shit is just, I don't, I don't understand it, but it ain't for me to understand. But, like, I know one thing for sure. The artists and music is being picked by some higher ups, my nigga. Because cause every, because you know how many niggas I know with? that make dog i grew up with a camp full of niggas that made fire music you would never you you would never hear that shit because they don't want you to hear it you know what i'm saying it's not no ignorant message to the shit it's not you know what i'm saying you got to get a nigga to really really ready to sell his fucking soul then them niggas with the big deals then the niggas you go nigga you see look how do a nigga be number one and all of a sudden you don't even hear about him no more this one fucking album and he be the hottest nigga. As soon as he don't do something, you don't even hear that nigga no more. I love Wayne was like, look, look at the baby. Right? That's the baby. That's the nigga who shot the nigga, right? Not the little baby. Right? That's the baby. Hottest nigga, the hottest shit ever. Then all of a sudden you don't hear nothing. You even speak on this nigga like he old or something. This nigga, it's only been a year. Nigga, they was dick handling the shit out this nigga a year ago. Now you look at that nigga today. And this nigga ain't shit. This nigga, for real, people talk about that. I was listening to the radio the other day. Like, oh, that nigga played out. Like, oh, why would he go to the college and do that? I'm like, damn, that's the baby. Man, listen, listen. This shit is controlled by a power you wouldn't believe, my dog. Even with this YouTube shit. Like, I noticed, like, when I say something about a rapper, like, this shit might get 100,000 views now. When I say something about a rapper or a motherfucker... Especially if I'm dogging the motherfucker, like I want to say, Ice Cube was fake, uh, Tupac was fake, and he was. Watch this shit get a hundred thousand views. Now, now listen. Now if I talk about some real life shit, some real shit that's meaningful to my community, I'm gonna have a hundred views. But let me go on here and say Wack 100 is a hoe, and this and this and this and this. That bitch gonna go through the roof. It's gonna go do numbers. It's not because people not listening. It's because they pushing this shit, my nigga. Just like I said about the the, the cancer and the meat. And the shit that's causing people to die early is in the meat. And the meat that they poison and they get fucked up, they send that shit to certain area codes. They know niggas stand, okay, this is this a nigga area code. We're gonna send all this meat and all this dumb, dirty ass food and old poison food to these niggas over here. And we're gonna give this to them. It's the same thing with the music. They and, and, and in the YouTube shit. You look down every nigga, you, you gotta grab a nigga phone right now. Pretty much you and another black motherfucker, y'all gonna have all the same shit on your you gonna scroll down, you gonna see all the same shit. Man, it's it's it's, it's a trap, my nigga. All this shit is a trap, my nigga. It's 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 the fuck niggas minds over, dog. You know what I'm saying? And they got us out here living fucked up, but we can change all this, my nigga. Like I say, yeah, the whole my whole point of doing this is to say like Tupac was never a gangster. Ever. Any nigga who say that, nigga, fuck you. Nigga, you, you you ain't a real nigga yourself. You know that nigga wasn't no motherfucking gangster. But he did gangster shit. He stood for something, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, one thing I can say, he was a... His mama was a panther. So how the fuck couldn't he? He, he stood for the right thing. And he tried to use that third life image. But that's what got him killed. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be a motherfucking gangster and you not a fucking gangster. The gangsters don't move like that. No gangster gonna go smack no nigga for another nigga. You did some flunky shit. You want to smack this nigga to show off for the camera and got yourself killed, nigga. But it's more to it than that. But I'm just saying, for the kids that's looking and don't know no better, that's what happened, nigga. So that's your example. Like I say, man, we got to get rid of this gangster image. It wasn't ours from the beginning. That's some Italian shit that we took on. And we Scarface was the most... Listen, nigga, we ain't never had a black movie or a black person that we look up to more than Albertino and Scarface. What black motherfucker you know that we ever looked up to? Don't say Wesley Snipes with that bullshit-ass movie that they made about Detroit, uh, New Jack City. Come on, cut it out, man. Come on, my nigga. Scarface, nigga, niggas made Al Pacino. That that had to have been the most money he ever made in his life. Al Pacino should then be a billionaire if he was smart and had that shit. You know what I mean? Niggas got Al Pacino posters, shirt, Scarface this, Scarface that. There has never, 
why don't y'all do a movie about Big Meech and do it the right way and come out with it? They, they don't. They don't. But listen, most Italian movies that you see out here, they talk about niggas. They... They don't like niggas, but we for some reason we follow we follow all these don't don't rat don't do this don't do that we follow every rule that the mafia set in these movies, right? It's sad. We follow all this mafia Italian shit, and every movie they they tell you fuck the niggas. What you think I'm a moody off a of banana boat? What the fuck you think a moody iron moody is? A fucking nigga. He like basically what he said. What you think I'm a nigga off a of banana boat? But we follow behind that shit. We forget about that shit. John Travolta. All them niggas uh, talking. The, the movies we love, they down the niggas in. But we still to watch it, though. Like, you ain't never, don't know other race fuck with us. But, yeah, we'll talk about the Mexicans, the plug. We'll talk about the Colombians. I had a, them niggas don't like niggas. They don't. Just like I just told, I did one earlier about the Chaldeans in the hood. These motherfuckers in the hood, they don't like niggas. They look at us like we pieces of fucking shit and we below them. We come to their stores. They try to put up our front. They don't like niggas, man. These are facts. Now they gon' well, you, 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 you doing hate speech? That's not hate speech. That's real speech, my nigga. They don't. They come to our hoods, take our money, and go back to where they from. And they look at us. And they, you know, they whole conversation. Niggas hate each other. They fucking niggas. They don't like each other. They don't talk to each other. They don't support each other. That's what they talking about. But I can I, I can text this nigga a dollar for a ten cent bag of chips, a dollar and twenty five pack of gum, fifty cent now. Shit going up, but everything going up besides the the, the 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 shit that they pay you at work. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy out here, my baby. You gotta keep your eyes woke. But yeah, I just did this one about that Tupac shit, man. Them niggas weren't real gangsters, flat out. But it was we had some good time doing the, the hip hop. Like now, it didn't it, it didn't went to a place where. If we don't hurry up and change it, I see J. Cole and people like that trying to keep the, the shit alive. Like, even Boosie. Like, I say, it's, it's niggas out here that tell reality rap. It's a difference between reality rap and gangster rap. Gangster rap is that made-up shit. Like, that, to me, that King Vine shit. That, you know what I'm saying? That's not real fucking life, nigga. You talking about some... You know what I'm saying? Y'all making up some shit and trying to make it real life. Like, you know what I'm saying? They talk all this, 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 this shit. And then it happened. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like most of these niggas that gangster rap, you rap it, then you try to talk it into existence. Real rap is look, it's already happened. I'm just reporting on it. I'm just reporting about the poverty and what's going on. You see it in a slick, cool way. But listen, man, I'm telling y'all now, any music can be good, man. You can you can do rap about Jesus Christ, man. Positive shit on the right beat and it's still going, you going to have the same impact. You ain't got to talk about two, two, threes. That shit played out now. 7.62s and two, two, threes. And uh, we on serve and all this bullshit. That's bullshit, my nigga. We trying to pull ourselves up out this shit, my nigga. That's dope fiend activity. Any nigga out here on syrup or pills, you a fucking dope fiend. You no difference than a dope. And what's so fucked up out here with these new young niggas now, ain't nobody hustling. Who the fuck out here hustling now? The game ain't the same no more, my nigga. That's why they putting fentanyl and cocaine and shit. Because these niggas can't hustle. They just doing what they hear. They killing they, they fiends. Niggas can't hustle no more. It ain't nobody out here hustling and getting no money no more. Either you a scammer or a robber. Flat the fuck out. Two niggas that's in the way. Real talk. All love.